Now talking about revelation. And attracting revelation. We see that when God opened the eyes of Abraham, Abraham he saw his heritage. Then God said, Walk in what you have seen. So when you see a revelation, it will empower you to walk towards your prepared praise. Revelation will give you power and it will push you for in him we live and we move and we have our being. May God give you revelation. May God open your eyes that you may see when Pharaoh passed a law that every he child must be killed people began to kill their children then a woman a woman of vision gave birth to a certain boy called Moses and when the woman gave birth by revelation she saw a proper child then she said this boy must not be killed we destroy a lot of things yes. because we don't understand because we have not seen the value of it but the mother of Moses saw a proper child and she said at the expense of my own life I will protect this boy People of vision protect what they've seen. If you don't have vision, you destroy a lot of things. So you need to see. You need to see in order to possess. God said, Abraham. Abraham begin to walk in the power of the revelation and believe this that what you have seen will belong to your children's children in those days Abraham was a barren man he didn't have children but by revelation he saw his children's children in their thousands, in their millions, and God said, I have given this land to them. Nobody can take it from them. This is an everlasting covenant. What you see will become your heritage. If you believe it, I want to see your right hand. It's a God of heaven. Open my eyes. That I may see. You see, let me give you another scenario. There was a day. Abraham was instructed by God. That offer a sacrifice unto me. So Abraham built an altar. And when he built that altar. God instructed him to divide every animal he will sacrifice. Should cut them into pieces. So he cut them into two halves. In Genesis chapter 15. When you go home, read it carefully. On that day, God showed up to Abraham. Abraham. And said, I am the Lord Almighty. Walk before me and be perfect. Hallelujah. Amen. And as he praised the carcasses on the altar, he wanted to set them on fire. Because it was a burnt offering. But as they were on the altar, God instructed Abraham not to set it on fire. Abraham said, What should I do then? Abraham said, And God said, Just wait for me. I will do something today. And Abraham was watching. 
as he was watching over the sacrifice on the altar birds of prey descended on it they came to devour the sacrifice and Abraham had to fight them and to chase them out you see beloved your sacrifice could be destroyed your life of sacrifice could be devastated by devils so you have to watch over it you have to contend for the most holy faith you have to protect your faith you have to protect what you have seen. As Abraham was contending with the best of prey, he prevailed over them. And the best went away. But in that same evening, as he was waiting on God, a thick darkness of horror fell upon him. And Abraham slept like a dead body. As he was sleeping, thick darkness fell upon him. And he slept. And when he slept, his soul was taken to hell. And in hell, he saw certain things. He saw a demonic meeting. Demonic cabinet meeting. Protting against his children's children. That was the genocidal arrangement Satan did against the children of Abraham. They were protting. That will make his children slaves. They were protein. That will kill his male children. They were protein. That we will destroy them. And as they were protein, Abraham saw it by revelation. And as he saw everything, God came to him and God said, Abraham, Abraham of surety, what you have seen will come to pass. Today they say you are a barren man. But you bring forth. Your children, children will be many. But they will become slaves in a certain county. They will become slaves in the land of the wicked. For 400 solid years. And in these 400 years, Satan will afflict them. The devil will squeeze them. They will be afflicted on every side. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. And Abraham said, Oh God, why will you allow this? Then God said, You see what Satan wanted to do? He wanted wanted to squeeze them to death. But do not worry. I will show up when the 400 years are over. After the four generations, I will step in with my vengeance, with my vindication, and I will punish that nation, and I will take their riches and give it to your people. On that day, there will be a world transfer exercise. That season is coming. That season is coming. A time is coming. A season of world transfer. Yes, baby, and I said that. In that day, riches in the hands of the wicked will be given to somebody, will be given to the righteous. If you believe it, you say, I receive it. Let somebody say, I receive it. I see a season of wealth transfer. Yet, 
I see a season of wealth transfer. I need two people. Young man, come forward. Young lady, come. Take this. A season is coming. For the purposes of this illustration, he belongs to the children of darkness. He belongs to people who have gotten all the money. But they are not of God. But a day is coming. On that day, a command will issue from heaven. Give the money to the young lady. Give it to her. Take the money. Go and sit down with it. Young man, go with nothing. I see that season coming. I see that season coming. Riches in the hands of the wicked will come to you. I didn't hear Amen. I said, I see a season of wealth transfer. Children of the wicked will transfer their riches to you. Because God will show up. God said to Abraham. On the day of my vengeance, I will go to Egypt. I will speak to Pharaoh. I will speak to everyone. I will speak to bank managers. Managers that give the money to the man. Receive it now. Receive it now. Let somebody say, This is my wealth transfer season. And God said, the devil thought he would use the 400 years to punish my children. But I have my own time machine. And I am measuring the iniquities of the Amorites. I am measuring it. At the 400 years, the cup of iniquity will be filled to capacity and I will be justified to kill every one of them and give their lands to my people. A day is coming. God will remove the wicked and put you in your right place. If you believe, say, I receive it. The one who is molesting you God will kill that fellow. The one who is devastating your life. God will cut him down. God will cut her down. And you shall be exalted. So in Revelation, Abraham saw Abraham certain things. What did he receive by revelation? When he saw the agenda of Satan, by revelation, you will see the mind of your enemy. So in Psalm 119, reading from verse 98 to 100, if he he said, by your ordinances, by your word, I have become wiser than my enemies. Revelation will make you wiser than your enemies. Oh, I didn't hear this. Amen. Revelation will make you wiser than your enemy. Revelation will make you know what the devil is thinking. When witches in your family meet to plan, to strategize, and to devise devices, by revelation, you will know what they are about to do. God, by revelation, told Abraham that this is what the devil wants to do. And Abraham knew what the devil devil will do. No, Abraham, in the same revelation, God said that after four generations, I will step in. Revelation will let you know the mind of God. Revelation will show you what God will do for you. God said that after four generations, I will speak 
I will bless your children. May God open your eyes to see the mind of your enemy. He said, by revelation, I become wiser than my enemies. By revelation, I become smarter than my teachers. By revelation, I am smarter than the ancients. That is what God said. And that's exactly what he would do. May God open your eyes. May he give you deeper revelation. So Abraham saw what God would do. He saw what the enemy was planning. May God let you know what your enemy is planning. There was a time that the king of Syria planned to assassinate the king of Israel. So he laid an ambush. But when they were planning to kill the king of Israel, God by revelation showed it to Elisha. In these days, when they are brought in to destroy you, may God open the eyes of your pastor. May God open the eyes of your wife. May God open the eyes of your elder. May God open the eyes of your children. So that nothing will be hidden from you. Elisha said, Elisha can say, As for this thing, wait here. God did not show it to me. He said it on the day that the Shunammite woman lost her son. The boy died because there was no revelation. When there is no vision, the people perish. But in the multitude of revelation, there will be safety and life. When you get revelation, you will see what the devil wants to do. When they were brought in, God opened the eyes of Elisha and he saw the enemy's strategy and he told the king of Israel that they've laid an ambush. Do not use this path. They want to kill you. By revelation, the king was saved. Revelation gives life. When you get the revelation, it gives you liberty. It gives you deliverance. That's what Jesus said. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. May you be liberated today. May God give you life transforming revelation. The Bible says that they that go to the high seas and to do business in deeper waters shall see the wonders of the deep and the handiwork of Jehovah. Revelation will let you see great chances and it will affect your desire. So Jesus and his disciples according to our first Bible reading Matthew chapter 16 verse 13 to 19. Jesus took his disciples to Caesarea Philippi. And there he posed a serious question to them. That as you go about what is the perception of the people about me? And they said, Some say you are like Elijah. Some say you are like Matthew. You are like Jeremiah. You are like John the Baptist. And Jesus said, What about you? What do you say about me? And Peter, as he was struggling to appreciate the person and the personality of Christ, God gave me a revelation. And he said, You are the Christ, Son of the living God. May God give you revelation. May God give you revelation. And Jesus said, Now you should say, Hey, Simon Bal Jonah. Hey, you're not Simon. Who told you this? When they can't say him, that's a mature. Where did you get the same from? 
said he You know, Peter was a braggart. If Christ had not stopped him, he would have said, Oh, you know me, I know everything. But Jesus said, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Flesh and blood have not revealed this. That my Father, which is in heaven, He gave you the revelation. And because of this revelation, you are blessed. Yes, sir. The revelation you shall see will bless you. Today you are blessed because you have seen something. Let someone say, I am blessed. And sister say, I am blessed. I'm talking about you say, I am blessed because I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. I've seen God the judge of all. I have seen Jesus. The possessor of the new covenant. I have seen the blood of the sprinkling. And I have seen innumerable company of angels. I have seen the mountain of the Lord. I have seen the city of the living God. And I am come there. What you see will bless you. Then Jesus said to Simon, I used to catch a Pedro said that from today, say Simon, if you're there, we will not call you Simon again. Yeah, friend Simon, you will be called Petros. Petro Petros. Your revelation will change your identity. I see an identity upgrade. God is lifting somebody. And it is coming with a change of name. Somebody's name is changing. Somebody's title is changing. Somebody's identity is changing. Let somebody say, My identity is changing. My status is changing. My name is changing. Yes, it's somebody. Your revelation can change your identity. I see change in identity. You are no more called a poor man. They will call you rich man. Oh, I see a rich man. I see a rich woman. When you get too much money, your name change. Receive a new identity. And God said to Jacob, you no know more be called Jacob. You are called Israel. For you have contended with men. And now you have contended with God. And you have prevailed. Your revelation will change your identity. I see a new name. I see a new office. I see a new look. People will struggle to make you out. If you believe it, say, I see my change. My change has come. This is the day that the Lord has made. And you will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. And you be glad. And you be joyous. We serve the living God. God has declared a season for somebody. Adam. God has declared a season for somebody. And on that day, all things will be made beautiful. And no man you never have it. In his time, I want him to He makes all things beautiful. We are the day This is the day. And then it's done. I want someone to say, "This is the day." If so, we can say, "Ne, it's done." You see, wahoo. If you want to have revelations, so we say, "Ne, dear." There are things to do. And no more be one way. It's just a way. The first one is desire to know more. Desire for it is written. What the wicked fears will overtake them. But the desire of the righteous will be granted. It is in the Bible. So desire for revelation. Daniel, Daniel, 
desired for more revelation. And he got bigger revelation. He was praying only for Israel. Israel. He wanted a revelation that would define the history of Israel. But God gave him global vision. About all the kingdoms that will come before the Messiah. So desire. Desire for bigger revelations. I want you to lift up your hand and say, Father, give me revelation. Deeper revelation. Say, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, even as I ask, give me revelation. Deeper one. Write it down. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24. Said the fear of the wicked shall come upon him. But the desire of the righteous shall be granted. That's what 1 Peter 2, verse 2 said. Desire the sincere milk of the word. Desire the sincere mark of the world that you may grow by it. Who want to have better revelations? Are you ready for bigger revelations? Then desire. Tell God that show me. Tell me something about my future. About my children, about my husband, about this church, about this nation. So desire it. Desire more revelation. There are things that you desire. You tend to ask for them. The second thing to do is to draw closer to God. If you want more revelation, draw closer to God. That's why the Bible says, that they that wait on the Lord shall be renewed in strength. How do I draw closer to God? By spending my time on the Bible. Meditating on the word of God. Psalm 1. The Bible says that he meditates on the word of God. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers. So drawing closer to God means that you come to church regularly. You spend time on the scriptures. You meditate on the word of God. And you pray a lot. Another thing to do to Receive deeper revelation. Is to create an atmosphere conducive for sound spirituality. So you create a spiritual atmosphere. The earth has its own atmosphere. When you go to heaven, it has a different atmosphere. As a believer, you can create a spiritual atmosphere. Then, then you tap from that atmosphere. How do you create a spiritual atmosphere? I want the young ministers here to take notice. The first one is abstinence from filthy lifestyle. That's why God will not speak to Abraham until Lord got separated from him. The second one is reading and meditation of the word of God. Reading and meditation. You attend CAC. Church of Apostle Anim. 
Apostle Nim was sorry. That you don't read the Bible. And so kind of me But Apostle Nim was noted for asking these questions. Apostle Nim, I'm not saying no business answer me. Children are dead. What does the scripture say? So Apostle Nim was somebody who knew the Bible. Oh, you be an Odim Tresem no. He studied the scriptures. Oh, see an me answer. If you want to create spiritual atmosphere, so I saw you who must not be a man who read the Bible. Cause so kind of me answer. Meditate on it. He an me answer no. The third thing to do. Yeah, that's what me and Sandy say. Is prayer and fasting. Sell the bomb pay at Shekum. As chapter 13. As one for humanity, do me and say. If you read from verse 1 to 4. In we can go see 9. Bible said that in this particular church, in the church of Antioch, there were prophets and preachers. They were there, but nothing happened. And so be and see. They were there, no more, but nothing happened. And so be and see. There was no revelation until a day that they decided to minister to the Lord. On that day, they were fasting. They were ministering. So fasting and prayers are prayers are prayers prayers Empire. Intense worship. Any sorry we Praises and worship. Draws the mind of God into the domain of the people of God. And as they were fasting and praying and ministering unto the Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke and said, Separate for me, Paul and Barnabas. For the purpose for which I call them. There is a purpose for your life. But where there is no revelation, you may never know why God called you. God open your eyes that you may see. May God open your eyes that you may see. Then associate yourself with people of vision. Associate yourself with wise men and women. Associate yourself with people who love spirituality. For it is written. The friend of the wise shall become wise. But the companion of fools shall become foolish. Today, may God open your eyes. May God open your eyes that you may see. Thank you for making time with us. We believe you've been blessed hearing today's message. For copies of today's sermon, audio, DVD, and MP3, visit the Christ Apostolic Church International Headquarters Bookshop at Osu, where you can also get other life-changing Christian literature. Follow us on these social media handles. Visit our website on www.cac-int.org. Send us an email, info at cac-int.org. For further inquiries, kindly call 055-970-9267-055-970-9432-023-665-555-0302-77-24-97. You can also visit any of our branches worldwide and fellowship with us. Join us again on this channel. God richly bless you.